Welcome to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture, the podcast. I am your host, Amira Smith, and I have, of course, always here, my awesome co-host, Joshua Meekin. What's up? Um, so, dang, I was, was not ready for that, but <laughs> we're, we're good anyway. Um, first and foremost, remember everybody to like, subscribe, follow the podcast, share it. It's all good. We got it. It's, I forgot it's team, my line. Teamwork <laughs> makes the dream work. You know, like, subscribe, follow. We want to make sure that, you know, our reach only goes as far as people share our content. So please, please, please do that. Um, today's episode is going to be a fantastic one like it normally is. We have another great friend of mine, another hometown hero from Jersey. We rep Jersey very hard in this podcast. Right, Amir? I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm going to let you handle it. Okay. I got I to shout my homies out. But, you know, I, again, another person who's, who's hustling, finding the grind, finding themselves through their journey. I have my boy B Easy in the studio. What's up? What's up? Yes, sir. What's going on? Love to have you. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Appreciate it. I, 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 of course, you were another person that I thought of to be on this podcast because I know that you're you're an artist. You know, for people who don't know, um, you're an artist. Uh, you could say hip hop, or would you would you say your genre specifically? Yeah, hip hop, rap. Okay, hip hop, rap. I guess rap. Too. Spoken word. So you did some poetry. Yeah, poetry. Like, there we go. Sure. There we go. So. For me, following you as an artist, I know you, you've had your trials and tribulations and just seeing your journey has always been really incredible. It's been one that's been very much like self-finding, very much kind of reflecting your environment, but at the same, you know, finding who you are and being true to who you are, sure. which at this time, you know, it's, it's not easy, an easy thing to do and not easy for people to grasp. So, you know, I wanted to give you a chance to, you know, talk about that. But um, like we always do, um, why don't you start from day one? You know, what what introduce yourself and then, Tell the people what made you want to pick up a pen of paper to kind of get your thoughts out of the paper. Okay. So I go by the name of Be Easy. Um, so I started out probably at the age of eight years old. Uh, my mother, she was a background singer for Cool in the Gang. So she used to take me around to like um, all types of gigs and shows and events that she did. Um, and she used to sing, sing the theme song for the uh, pro ball team for the Trenton uh, Shooting Stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sovereign Big Arena. So every time I used to see her like in front of everybody and to see everybody's reaction to her voice, like um, I, she just inspired me. Like she was like mm-hmm. one of the women to me, single mom, doing what she do. Yeah. Um, and since then, music's always been in my blood, um, even though I can't sing a, a lick. So um, I started writing poetry. Um, mm-hmm. And the first thing I ever wrote um, was my aunt, God bless her soul. She passed away um, and I wrote a poem dedicated to her and I recited it at her funeral. And it, at that moment, um, it was basically purely built for the, well, my passion is built off of my connection to whoever I dedicate what I'm writing to. Okay. to. So starting out with that, um, I, I, you know, I went on and then I was influenced by rappers like uh, Tupac yeah. and um, Nas just because the infliction in their voice and their tones and the stuff that they talked about in their songs. Um, and then, you know, I got into the, you know, I started really understanding the game as they started, you know, having, you know, 106 in Park and everything yeah. on BT, MTV popping off. Um, and then I just started, um, I started battling. Um, and I didn't tell anybody. Yeah. I was in like middle school. I went to Fisher. Uh, yeah, Fisher, Fisher middle, middle school. school. Hold it down. Uh, I didn't, I didn't tell nobody that I wrote rhymes. Mm. Um, so like if I dated a girl or something like that, um, I'd just be mad and I'd be upset. And I literally go home and write a whole 16 about her. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and that's I, how it starts, you know? <laughs> when passion comes out, you got to let them know what the words are. 16. But, did, but did you, like, the girls ever know you wrote diss tracks about A them? couple. A <laughs> <laughs> couple, yeah. Ironically, I still do that, I guess. But... <laughs> passion comes from where it comes from. But um, all the battle rappers in school, um, I knew who they were, but they didn't know I rap. Yeah. So I had, like, Verses laid out already for them. Yeah. So as soon as my boys found out that I rapped, they were like, "Yo, uh, yo, Brandon rap." They're like, "What? Brandon rap? He quiet. He don't really be around." Yada yeah. yada. They're like, "All right, come be <laughs> with him." And I literally it'd be stuff that I've been working on for years. I'm like, "All right, I'm a little shy." Um, and then I just I just started kind of making a name in the neighborhood just for like battle rapping. Yeah. Um, and I I got the name Easy from that. I. I I, ironically, from Jersey, but I grew up listening to Philly radio. Easy. <laughs> yeah. So at the end of all my 16s, like I'll be battling somebody and I'm da 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 easy. And then everybody, this would be at like Union High, yeah, yeah. I'd be battling everybody, everybody around me used to be like, easy, easy. And then uh, my cousin was like, yo, why don't you just make that your name? Be easy. 
So it, it just stuck with me from a young age, and I, you know, I still have it. So that's fire. Yeah, that's I mean, cool. I feel like the best situation, the best or the worst situations, started from like middle school battle raps. You know what I'm saying? Right. The cafeteria, surrounded by your homies, and, and having that kind of gaslit. That's got to be fueling the fire, you know. That's at least having too. like friends and things. But it's, it's also crazy to think is this age gap because mm-hmm. I know y'all were in middle school when the <laughs> Six and Park came around, and I'm like, yo, I was girl. <laughs> I was like, what? Well, he was right there. Though. Yeah, he was right, right there. He was right behind you. Y'all was little kids, like, oh my god. I was like, oh, I'm gonna <laughs> shoot over there and go chill up, like, yo. So you, so you knew from an early age. All right, so you, you were there with your mom, you're seeing the business. Like, you knew, you were like, I want to be in a business, but you were shy, Yeah. right? So, what? I guess it's like the, when you were, you had that vision of yourself of being in the industry. Mm-hmm. How long was it before, even with the battle rap and being young, that you took yourself where you were like, I'm going to make a living doing this? Like, was it really apparent or did you kind of see it as like a thing you were playing with or like, ah, this is cool, but did you really see a path to make it like, you know, a career so um I, I grew up in like i grew up in like the ewing trenton area so everybody knew me and i was the cool guy for being a rapper like they took me my boys would take me anywhere to battle anybody like it was it was that serious and then i moved um to like you know north jersey west windsor plainsboro which is predominantly it's, it's weird because you would think it would be predominantly white. Yeah. But it's predominantly Indian and Asian. Mm. Then it's white people. And ironically, the, the predominantly... The, long story short, I came up in there as the token black guy, yeah. and everybody expected me to be the rapper. So uh, I, I kind of had to figure out what else I had to do in order to fit in. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, when I was in high school at the other, at the other school, I'm like, yo, this is all I need to do. Like, I probably wouldn't have went to college. I probably would have went a whole different route in life if if my mom didn't move me out. Um, but with that, I'm like, I need something else. So I, I kind of locked in the school a little bit more, and I moved to uh, Philly where I went to Temple. So I, in my head, I was like, I want to be a rapper. And I'm, I'm literally telling everybody at the school, like, I'm going to college so I can rap. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, that's not possible. Like, you can't do that. Then I'm like, okay. I'm, my major is going to be entrepreneurship, and I'm getting a business degree from Temple University. And they're like, that, that don't mean nothing. And at that time, like, I, the word entrepreneur wasn't as popping as it is now. Yeah, yeah. So everybody was like, what the hell? And I, I had to, you know, I'm like, fact sheets. I'm like, Diddy's an entrepreneur. Uh, Russell Simmons is an entrepreneur. Yeah. I want to be a mogul. So it, it, it was a little shaky for everybody, but I didn't really care. And I came out in Philly, and I loved the city. And I, I grew up listening to everybody battle rap on the radio. Um, so I felt like, I, you know, I wanted to be immersed in the culture uh, musically. So I, when I came out here, um, I, I, I didn't have anything except uh, three rhyme books full of bars. Okay. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and a mixtape me and my boy uh, recorded in his basement with, like, some shitty equipment. Um, and... And off of every, like radio beats. Yeah. So when I came, I came to Philly. Um, the first person I met, I didn't even meet him in person, was uh, DJ Damage. Oh, it's funny wow. we, we was talking about him earlier. Yeah. And I messaged him, and I saw him and his brother uh, Feast. They were they were dropping like he was open. He opened up for Nas, and they were uh, dropping records and taking over the uh, the city. And I was just like. I need to I need to get down with y'all. What, what do I need to do? So I'm messaging. I'm like, yo, play my music, play my music. I'm like, what? I'm I, I'm I'm young and I'm hyped. So yeah. I'm just like, please. And he always show me love. So yeah. he's like, yo, I got you. And I'm like, really? So like, I just pull up the parties and events, and he would play my music like in the in the beginning, right when everybody's coming in, and I'd be like, all right, this this is love. Like, I'm, I might be able to make something happen. So I I recorded my first mixtape with Feast. Um, in their crib, him and uh, Fees and Damage's crib. And what was the mixtape called? Easier said than done. Okay. Um, bars, bars, bars. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> oh, you couldn't tell me nothing at that time. And um, that was my first like official mixtape. And in my head, I was like, I can make this happen. Um, and I, uh, Fees produced one of the beats on one of the songs too. And I, I, I found some kid that was uh, recorded skateboard videos around Philly. Yeah. And I'm like, you ever try shooting a music video? Yeah. He was like, I'll try it out. And we made we made a dope video. And at that moment, I'm just like, I'm making this shit happen. Yeah. And then 
I just kept going from there for real, for real. Up until now. That's like um that's grassroots. That's that's really like from the from the I guess it's from the bottom, but like I, I always pride, you know, a lot of the people that we talk to and just having the ability to stick with it. Like we, we talked yeah. to Josh a couple of episodes ago and he was talking about the same thing. He realized, you know, football wasn't for him. He came into, you know, uh Philly and just like figured it out. So like even to to your testament, like, you know, people were telling you that's not possible, you can't do that. Right. Well I'm gonna show you, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna break it down to you. I'm gonna go to Temple, I'm gonna go to Philly, I'm gonna change my environment. I'm gonna share my music. I'm gonna figure out, you know, how to make it happen. So that being like your first step has got to be like incredible. You know yeah. what I'm saying? How many projects have you dropped since that mixtape? Sheesh. Um, probably seven. Okay. Wow. Okay. Because when I was when I was in school, I I wanted to make it. I dropped like project every year, and they were probably they were like mixtapes, but they were like probably like twenty songs deep. Um, Cause that's what people were actually listening yeah. to, like yeah. thatpiff.com, yeah. hotnewmixtape.com. Uh, so I, I was just, I was just giving it, and then I shot visual, a lot of visuals. Like if you go on my YouTube, you see a lot of my old songs mm-hmm. that aren't available on streaming platforms <laughs> because they're not. It's me coming up. Yeah. Um, I'm not as I wasn't as polished as I am now. Yeah. Um, as a lyricist. Um, um, after a while, I taught myself how to record myself and audio en- engineer. Mm-hmm. So, like a lot of the old songs that you could still hear some kinks, probably to me, but like to the naked ear, you probably don't hear. But to me, I'm just yeah. like, I, I don't like this, but it got a good amount of views. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna keep yeah. perfecting your craft yeah. too. And let yeah. people see your journey, you know what right. I mean? Like, that's what they um, they connect with, especially they see the old stuff. They're like, I knew, I knew he was a star back then, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right, so you're independent, yes. Or do you plan or are you hopeful to sign to a label deal? Or um, If it makes sense and they align with where I would like to go uh, creatively um, and as far as, you know, licensing and copyrights yeah. and everything, I, w- I would love to work with a label. Um, there's nothing like having that uh, machine or back power in the back. A lot of artists still praise being independent, yeah. but um, there's a difference between there's a lot of artists that are, have been signed first and then they failed and they made a lot of relationships from being signed mm-hmm. that helped them to be independent where they are now. Um, and I feel like the situation is right. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's weird because I was watching like a old interview with like L. Cool J yeah. and like Rakim and Eric B. And they were like, yo, they're talking about the in- industry at that time was shicey. And he was like, no, I'm, I'm good. I, we, we had a good deal. Like as long as the paperwork yeah. is right. But you gotta have someone in your corner. Well, I mean, was it, old, was it an of old course. interview? Was the question? No, nah, that was like two years ago. Okay. When he was talking about. Oh, L was talking about it. No, it was Rakim. Oh. And he he was talking about how he, he said uh, Will Smith took his style when he wrote Summertime. Yeah, but he always they because they always was trying to chase him for a long time, say that he ghost wrote it for him. Yeah, he yeah, said, yeah. He was like, nah, I wasn't there. But Will was right. like, yeah, like I was inspired. I took a style. But he was like, I didn't write that for him. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah, it was that interview. Yeah. For the Breakfast Club. Yeah. He was talking about it. Yeah, but that's, um, I mean, the industry is, you know, like, it is. It is. Yeah. It's, it's been shady for a long time. Yeah, I no. mean, but it's just like, let me take your art and let me sign right here and I'm going to sell it. And I'm gonna give you some of the money, right? Because I got all the relationships, yes, you know. Right. And I'm gonna give you this money up front, but you gotta pay it back, right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's it's so it's, it's it's interesting. But I would be honored to to get in the door to meet certain people. Yeah. I feel like that I could build with. Yeah. Like if I if I had an honor to be in the same room as Pharrell, I feel like our energy would probably sink just based off of me being a human being and my experiences in life, and maybe what he had went through. Yeah. And. Uh, Maybe the label's the only person that could put me in front of him in that type of space. Like, I might run into him on the street, but yeah. he just might be like, oh, he's, a, he's another nigga trying to rap. He's not trying to hear me. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. You never know. Yeah. But I'm, I'm open to it. I'm not saying that I would do it. Yeah, I, yeah I'm not saying be against, be against it because, like, labels will set you up for the visibility. Facts. Yeah. They don't always set you up for the bag. Though. That, too. That, too. Yeah. Man, I mean, being able to advocate for yourself, especially as an artist, is huge. Yeah. So, like, being able to know that. Which I feel like you just, you have that edge now. You know what I'm saying? You talk about growth. Being able to come from your first mixtape with DJ Damage and, and figuring out what the game is then, then what the game is now, you know, it's growth, it's just now timing and yeah. an opportunity, you know what I'm saying? That's why we highlight the artists that we have here to give them the, you know, the venue to speak where they got to speak, you know what I'm saying? So what would you say is your differentiator as far as in you 
again, like like compare it to other rappers? Mm-hmm. Well, how well, how how does Be Easy stand out? I say even artists too, like you know, give yourself the, the broad spectrum. Yeah. Um, we say artists. What you mean? Like all like. Because a musical artist. Yeah, he's a artist. You know, stuff like that too. Oh. Like, yeah. yeah. All around. Yeah. So I I feel like just my content. Um, so starting touching on the merch. Yeah. Um, a couple years back, I dropped a project called Manifesto EP. Um, which I felt like was my declaration or my new declaration to the industry post grad and me in, in real life. And the play off the word manifesto, I cut it off and um, focus on the word manifest. And I started to making merchandise like hats and uh, hoodies and shirts. Um, and, it, and it did very well because it was before everybody else was talking about manifest. And then it became cliche and, you know, but um, I, that's. That kind of showed me that I can, you know, make merch and clothing and expand on my brand. Um, you probably hear like Nipsey Hussle used to talk about all his interviews. Like, as, as far as being like a, a business, you want to be like Disney. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, the movies are popping, but you can go to Disneyland, take a ride, wear the Mickey Mouse hats, wear the T-shirts, play with the toys. There's all different things, but it's all branched off the same thing. Yeah. So like Crenshaw was a, a project that he had, and then he just kept pushing the merchandise but off of that. So that's what I come on to do with each project I do because there's a story behind it and what yeah. it represents and I hope people can resonate with that. So my one, bringing it back to the question, um, I feel like it's my content. Um, so at that time, I felt like nobody was necessarily talking about that as a rapper. Um, currently where I'm at, um, I talk about different things. Like I, I talk about healing, um, cleansing your space. I'll talk about sage and smudging. I'll talk about crystals. I talk about getting your, your energy right before you go outside the crib, lighting a diffuser, an incense for you, and and, and uh, curving any negative just because it looks good on paper because what look good ain't always good for you. Mm-hmm. So um, that, that I'm kind of getting more into that as I, you know, growth as a person and a human being. I, I just want to tell my story because I feel like um, the, the mindset of um, somebody uh, – little immature as a black african-american male in the united states is always told us the same story as an artist and that's what the machines like to push because they want us to stay in that mindset and they want us to keep doing the same thing and repeating the errors and music is that is by far the biggest influence Mm -hmm. in our culture so i feel like it's it's important you know, not to be preachy or not to, you know what I mean? I'm still, you know, I'm still me. I'm still a nigga. But I, I like to, you know, put a, a here or there, you know, some, you know, some gems in there that hopefully help somebody or somebody that was me years ago um, get out that dark space and grow um, or better themselves. You know, so that makes putting sense. out healing frequencies, you, um, do you report in any specific frequencies? Like, is that like, what is it, like 435 or 3? What is it? I, I gotta look that up. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I just started. Janae does that. So, yo, I, I, just, yeah. I was just looking into her, how she was like using our sound bowls mm-hmm. and everything she records. And I was like, yo, I might have to cut me one of that. <laughs> but I'm, 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 I'm working on that. I'm, I'm, I just got right with my energy. Yeah. Um, and I feel like the type of uh, beat selection is it, kind of, it's, it's like a, it's like heartfelt lo-fi, mm-hmm. um, but it has like a new kick twist to it. That people can resonate to it, um, and I feel like I, I'm I'm the gateway drug for. I want to be a gateway drug for healing for uh, for people. I don't want to be too, you know. You don't want to preach to only people who know about it. You like yeah. like let me help lead people. Yeah, because I'm like preachy songs. Yeah. to an alternative of like what you can do with your energy. You um you said you preach in your songs. Right? No, I made those like preachy songs. Yeah. And then I'll be at the show and then I'll have like a couple people fuck with me in the front and then the rest of them will just be like, all right, he's doing too much. So it's cool to have those in tuck, but not as like the my my leading main songs, if that makes sense. Yeah. To me, because I you know, I've I'm rap for a long time and I, I I want something that everybody can, you know, vibe to. Nothing that's I have heavy stories, but right now I'm yeah. in a good space. So I yeah. kinda wanna you know, have something more for everybody. So I, I know when you start talking about the energy under the mirrors, our eyes are going to light up a little bit. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Not because... You know, because it's like life is energy, and, and you're right. Like music, when you think about it, like film and music content, mm-hmm. is, um, that's why it's called programming. It programs you, but 
music is one thing. You a, a film you gotta watch, right? You can hear things, but you don't know the whole story. But music, you can be in the car, you could be in the waiting room, you could be in the elevator. It's there, right? Same. And it's always dropping in on you. So it's like, what is if it's there? What's it downloading to you? You know what I mean? Yes. And we all can, you know, tell a story in third person, and it could be the story of, you know, but what's the what's the redeeming message at the end of it? You know, um, because I'm, you know, I was I was a hip hop kid, so it's like. Like, I was here for, like, the whole Rakim, you know what I mean, arc. Yeah. Where y'all was, like, born into it. <laughs> but it's like, I was a little kid when he came into the industry, but I, you know, I was here for the whole arc. And because right. my family's in Long Island, so they're, like, two counties away from where. He's oh, from wow. Wine Dance, Long Island. And my family's from Huntington. So it was like, they were down the road. Their last soul was down the road. So it was like, I'm here in Philly. Yeah. New York was, their hip-hop scene was already, like, crazy. We didn't even have hip-hop on the radio when I was, um when I first went out there to visit them. But so it's like, I've been for the whole arc, but it's like, we could talk about anything. We could talk about hustling, trapping, whatever, anything. But at the end of that message, what was the, like, it's like a movie. How did you sum it up? Right. It's like, like Scarface is meant to be like a cautionary tale. Right. But if there was never, you know. of it mm-hmm. being successful in the dope game but the paranoia that came along with it you know what i mean like yeah hey, he talked about the like the other side that is like uh this is kind of heavy right but yeah. then sometimes people don't they don't talk about the heavy part um i want to double back to what you said about merch because like so do you feel like you got some of those lessons from temple like creative because my kid was um looking at the clive davis institute at nyu Right. And their music program is all about creative entrepreneurship. They they push that more. They're like, listen, we, they're fire, like, we're yeah. not going to, which was funny because they were like, we're not going to like necessarily make you the Grammy award winning. They're like, it's not really music. They're like, the music is primary, but that's not really what we want you here for. It's creative it's entrepreneurship. And they kept yeah. using like Pharrell as an example, where it's like you build business around it, right? Right. And like you said, what Nip said, because I ain't gonna lie, to so look at that and be like, y'all get these kids jobs in the industry, but then they all work for artists who didn't go to school. Mm-hmm. They end up working, I mean, they work for the best of the best. There was a right. girl who worked for Nip. They, they you know what I mean? Network. You know what I mean? But it's like, these, like, they, like, so it wasn't going to turn you out to be the star because a lot of the stars didn't go to school for music or whatever. Beyonce, Nip, like, they didn't go to school for it, right? They knew somebody. I mean, and then it started, and starting young is another thing too, right? You started yeah. young, right? But the creative entrepreneurship part where now that the world stopped, COVID comes, and people, shows that were done, yeah. so people stopped making mm-hmm. money, yeah. but the creative entrepreneurs kept making money. People who had, how they say, a, a tangible product on intangible content, yes. right? I can't touch a song. Right. I can't touch a film. Right. But if you got action figures around a film, if you got, you know, T-shirts, if you got towels, bedding, like, you know, right. Spider-Man sheets and stuff, all those things that are tangible, you could sell off of the content. Right. So it was like, did, was was that just common sense for you, or do you think like going to school for entrepreneurship at Temple like helped? I definitely think it helped, because um, I, I, it taught me like the well round, like the the program that I was in. Um, at first, like it, you know, you have your preliminary like you know college courses, but like. At, like one of my classes, one of my professors blew me away. He was just like, yeah, he was, he'd be teaching us. He'd be like, yeah, I'm a life coach. He was like, I just sit down with beautiful women and they pay me $250 an hour and for me to just give them advice about life. And I'm just like, how, like the idea of just having a like free flowing life and just, you know, doing shit like that on a Wednesday so evening. Enjoy. And I'm, and everybody, I'm going back to the dorm, everybody's talking about like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I need to do this for financing. I'm like, yo, Fuck risk homework, bro. Like, <laughs> I yeah. need to figure out some shit. Um, but yeah, it the it, it's, it's it's cliche to say, but I was always inspired by like Jeezy and the Snowman, yeah. and how like that T shirt bought its own life, and how we was hype as shit to have that shirt in school, even though we was about to get suspended. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, I got me one of them, yo. Um, and you know, even with like Nipsey Hustle, like. It, it, certain words that he had, it was just like the word victory, even though he had, like, you know what I mean? Eventually, he had victory. Like, before that, he just had a shirt that said victory. Yeah. And I see shit like that. I'm like, damn, I wish I came out with that. Yeah. So I started like selling merchandise in um, in college. Um, so I, I had an EP called the Heartbreaker EP. First, I wanted my logo. So I had my logo um, made up. 
um, by Phil Meyer. Hey, <laughs> hey, back in the day. Yeah. Um, so I had my logo, and then I had a uh, heartbreaker on the back. Um, and it was predominantly made for, like, women, because it was, like, around the lower back region. Um, and women just, like, loved it on campus. So, like, they would just buy it, run it up. And my name got bigger just because of the merchandise. And then the the music came after that. Um, so after that, I was just like, if it's taking a light, and then I saw people take my design and my idea. Mm-hmm. But after I saw that, I'm like, if, if they can do that, then I can come up with something new that people can gravitate towards too. Um, so I, I, I've always been uh, trying to keep going ever since that that actual launch. Yeah. But did you um, protect your ideas after that? No. Because it was like merchandise to me. Um, I, to me, I felt like anything as far as like, I, I didn't know it. I, I was still learning in school about that stuff. Yeah. But at that time, I was just like, it's, it's whatever. Yeah, you like, look, I'm the well that these ideas flow from. Yeah, like, and it's gonna be facts. more. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. can't do it like I did. Exactly. I mean, they're, that's important as for any artist or any anybody is like, you know, your your creative stamp is always gonna be you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Can't nobody bring that to the table. You don't want to bring yourself to the table at all times. Yeah. But you want to protect your work. Yeah. Right. If it was something, those piece. <laughs> if, well, yeah. Right. If it was something that I felt like I was fully attached to, I, I definitely would. But, but imagine if. H&M hair replicated thing. You'd be like, oh, they got a bag, bag. Exactly. Crazy. That's true. You'd be like, oh, I need a piece. But now, on camera, <laughs> everything is prote- protected. <laughs> hey. I'm here with it. I'm here. So even with that, like I think one of the things I, um, I know I wanted to talk about too with you is just like personal growth. You know what I'm saying? We talk about yeah. that a lot when it comes to you being an artist. Like Artists go through so much mental and emotional and physical just... We, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, period, you know, regardless right. of the situation. And um, me knowing you and just kind of knowing what you've been through, I mean, I compare a lot of your growth to very much similar, like Big Sean, for people who are familiar with Big Sean. Like, he was at uh, a point in his life, you know, where he wasn't right with him. He's over on many interviews now talking about, like, I finally, you know, got right with myself. You know what I'm saying? I got my energy right. I cleaned my auras. I got myself right. I started working out. Like, I started, you know, reading, reading content that was good for me. And, and that's what we started talking about more. If you listen to Detroit, too. He right. talks about that, you know what I'm saying? And I, I yeah. align a lot of your growth with that, you know what I'm saying? How you've kind of developed as an artist and like gotten yourself together from going to you know, the mix that you had in college, but now to like Sage Music, Sage Sundays, and like really advocating for good energy, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Which is like, you know, kudos to you definitely for, for all of that, yeah. that journey. At the same time, like, what was that growth like for somebody going through it? Woo! So that was a deep question. I just. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, was, it was hard. It's crazy because it's like, with these cliches, they say pressure makes diamonds. It's like, it, it, like I would not be where I'm at if it weren't for that, those tough ass, horrible experiences that I went through. Um, um, it's, 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 you know, when you, you hit that low. Hello? You don't have to, if you, whatever you feel comfortable sharing, you can share it. I don't want you to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much telling it in my, my new music coming yeah. out soon. So, um, when you hit the lowest, all right. So, when you, you hit the lowest of low, um, I hit, well, I hit the lowest of low. And I, uh, I had, was in dark time. And I'm not afraid to say it, but I, I had suicidal thoughts. Um, the music shit wasn't working out for me. I hated my day-to-day job, and they were about to fire me. I found out my father was diagnosed with cancer. My aunt passed away, and I found all that in I found out all that out in one day. Wow! Um, like literally, like in like a text from like an aunt. So it uh, and I was already close to it. So just with the day to days with you know family members and stuff going on. So um that was kinda like the ice the camel I mean whatever. Fuck me up. That was the cherry on top. So I um I never forget I drove to <laughs> this sounds crazy. Alright, so I drove in the back of uh Days In. Hold on one sec. It's good. Okay. It's so good. I drove in the back of Days In and I just fucking cry. Yeah. I just fucking like ugly face, scream face, cry, 
And um, my girlfriend at the time, she was worried about me and um, she knew I had these had suicidal thoughts. And um, she told somebody very close to me that I loved that I was having these thoughts. And that person found out, came to me and they were like, listen, if you go, I'm going with you. And that shit fucked me up. Because thinking of suicide is such a selfish thing to do. You're not necessarily thinking about the person that's not in your face every day, but loves you to death. Yeah. You're the, your aunts and uncles and your grandparents, your parents that pray for you every night, even though they might not even be prevalent in your life. They, you know, they, they, they care about you. Um, so at that point, I was just like, I don't know what I need I need to do, but I, I can't do this no more. I, I can't. I have to figure some shit out. Um, which is the hardest, you know, the first step to get better in anything is acknowledging that you have a problem. So I acknowledged that I had, you know, I, what I was going through, what was going on. Um, and I started going to therapy and um, therapist was an old head uh, in Philly, Dr. Levis Kenny, um, cool ass old head. And he just, he just gave it to me like he was like my older, like an older brother. Yeah. And he was just like, listen, he was like, look, niggas out here playing for keeps. And he was like, you just can't be out here, like, you know what I mean, doing what you're doing. And, and he, he gave me a lot of game, and, and he, he kind of gave me, he rebuilt, he, if, if, if he did some constructive surgery, he, re, he rebuilt my backbone. Yeah, yeah. Um, put and, the battery back in. Yeah, for facts. And um, it was like, it, and he helped make a lot of sense of stuff I had going on in my life. Um, I started reading more, um, and that's when I started, um, uh, the, uh, the pandemic hit. And my, my bank account was in negative and all that other shit. Um, and we were forced to stay in the crib. Yeah. And um, Diddy went on live. I, I, I just figured this out when I was I was actually talking to uh, Dex. Yeah. I figured this out. Diddy went on live and he was like, yo, a lot of people are down right now. He was like, I'm just here to lift the vibration. And he he didn't really put it in there, but he he, lit, he was like the stage. Yeah. So he was like, I'm playing some music. He had some lights going on. And he was just like, I need it. And I, it was weird, but like I felt the energy lift from watching him do that. And I'm like, oh no, I can't just be in, in my, my spirits. I don't know what, what Sage is or how it's going to affect me, but I'm about to just start. And then I start diving in like other creatives to try to get my creative flow. And I was listening to like uh, Nipsey Hussle's, uh, well, Lauren London, she was talking about Nipsey when he passed. And she was just like, his energy was, you know, everybody loved his energy from just looking at the interviews and before every morning before he left the house he would light sage and he would play music to protect himself and get his energy right before he went to the people outside the world and i was just like oh i need to look into this i need to check this out and see what's going on so i started burning sage myself and um at first i'm just like it probably did not do nothing and then like i had a you know a day at work and then it just it just i, I started feeling better i started letting stuff go and it started affecting the people in my household. And I'm just like, this is crazy. So yeah. I just kind of started looking into it. I started looking up affirmations, started getting heavy in prayer. Um, it just started, you know, getting more anchored with God. Um, and it, it kind of ignited my creative flow, um, get me getting my shit together, my finances straight, and just like um, becoming a man all in all. And like this and instead of me blaming my father for not being there being adult enough to be like listen i'm gonna grow into the adult that i feel like i always needed in my yeah. life yeah. so if you pass out i mean if you pass out if you pass away i need to be whole as a man to and and not have any regrets you know what i'm yeah. saying like like I, i'm not gonna i can't blame you. you did whatever you did to the best of your capacity yes. and so i can't blame you for you know what i mean it's, yeah. it's all about Meeting somebody where they're at too. Right, that too. Um, but it's it it's all about how you react to stuff. It's not necessarily what happens to you because a lot of stuff that happens to you is out of your control. Um, so it's all about rebuilding my mental. Um, and I, Sage was kind of like a kind of spearheaded it for me. So that's kind of why I wrote the song Sage Music. Yeah. To because anybody that's going through what I went through uh, or anything remotely close or they just having a bad day. Um, I, you know, I, hopefully you can find something that resonates or, you know, hit a frequent, or feel a frequency that touches um, you and helps you to uplift you, make you feel better. Um, but yeah, that's okay. When, when, when's the project dropping? 
So, <laughs> so Sage Music is out now on all streaming platforms. Um, we just Go download it, stream it, all that stuff. Yes, sir. Um, we just shot a crazy video with Phil. Um, I know it's crazy. Phil Meyer is. He's good. Yeah. He's good. I was I was mad. It was funny because you brought this artist name up earlier, and he I was, he showed up late. I'm like, bro. I'm like, we we gotta get rolling. He was like, yo, I had to, I had to shoot it uh, for me. He was like, I had to shoot something for me. And that's because you brought him up. He was like, he was like <laughs> um, but um, just just you know me going through my ups and downs and me. And me giving up, and then me having this like re re, I don't know, this recharge, yeah. yeah. And then having like small interactions like that, like I like I, that stuff like that inspires me. Yeah. I feel like it's like it's small things like that that shows me that I'm on the right path. It's not like I'm I'm recording music with them or anything like that. You know, it would be an honor too. But it's like okay, I'm I'm getting closer. You're on the right path. You know, what I mean, I'm I'm with the I'm with the right people and. The, and Phil was always my day one, one of my day ones, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And it be your day one people you grow with. So it, it, it just helps with it helped with the energy and the frequency that I'm at. The, the video is crazy though. I've never shot anything like this. <laughs> um it's it's a little left. Um my inspiration is Larry June, um Harry Belafonte, okay, and the nigga version of Eric Badu all wrapped in one. That's wow. me. That's what I. That's 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 what I want this new project that I'm working on to resonate. I didn't tell nobody that. I've been telling everybody I'm dropping singles, yeah. but I'm I'm working on dropping an EP by the end of the summer too. Okay. And I got a couple songs on top, like Tuck Lock and Loaded. Um, so I'm I'm really happy about this new energy and what I'm on. And I bought y'all some seeds too. Appreciate it. Appreciate um, it. He bought yeah. us a gift. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate it. Actually, crazy part is I just I, I definitely ran a sage. I had sage in my old crib. And this is this is love. I even keep the Super uh, love. too. Oh, thank so you. So I just yeah, I just I got I got a lot of sage at my crib too. Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so like for like moving like once the video drops, I'm yeah. I'm having a relaunch with like some of my merchandise. Absolutely. And then, like, everybody, support, please support. For sure. And then everybody that cops the merchandise, um, you know, I might have some sage or like some yeah. candles. Um just to, you know, help inspire yeah. those or maybe, you know, like I said, like kind of find something that resonated with me. Um, hope y'all can kind of feel the same. And something to help me, you know? Yeah, absolutely. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. That, those are some great people to like, as far as in like you said, like three, it's all legends, you know? Like, I really don't know Larry June. J-O-O-N? Uh, J-U-N-E, from oh. Cali. Wow. Word. Yeah. Word. We run in Cali. Word. Yeah. I mean, Belafonte legend. Yeah. Badu, Badu is who changed my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I was, yeah, met her in '97. So we were born, bought our painting. She brought me backstage, hmm. and what? I was yeah. I'm getting stories. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. She brought me backstage, smoking grooves at Camden. It was the Twi- Tweeter Center or E Center, oh, and like yeah. I got to hang with her and the band. And that's so why I met first met Supernova Sloan. Yeah. Um, he was on tour with her, like cooking for her and stuff. And then I, it just put me on a new like, dang, look at everybody and yeah. look at her. I'm looking at her skin. I'm just looking at everything. And then that's when I. Through her, I was introduced to Queen of Fua. So when I had my son, he was a couple months. I always go to the Hillbot Self Center. Like she changed my life. Like you know what I mean? Like it's I love you, you learn, and it's, and it's like you will open a path for other people because I changed my my family's life. Like I, my me changed the way I ate, changed the way everybody else does. My mom doesn't right. do any dairy. You know what I mean? Wow. And at first it used to be like a uh, like it was a burden to everybody, but then everybody like you know you fall in line. So it's like the crazy how you're like you saw Diddy. And that like brought you into a way where you're like, well, what is this? You're like, like raising my energy because that's what we all are. We're all energy, yeah, right? Energy. We're all like everything is vibrating from the walls to everything. So it's like literally the frequency that you tapped into, it mm-hmm. can change your mood. And that frequency, the sound, food, whatever. So it's like, let me let me download your project. Let me get, let me get my yeah. get my my well, frequency even, rate. even when this is uh, over, like please just send us the information because we're gonna promote it. Like I told you all the yeah. time, whatever you got, let's promote it. That's, that's, that's love. On top of that. that's I got you. Yeah. yeah. So even when um, so I know we run out of time a little bit. So I want to make sure that we just I want to give you I want to give you two of the two of the drinks that we always ask, which is one if you could describe a album, mixtape, and or film mm-hmm. if you would like to describe where you are in your life right now, what would it be? My son is gonna put you on the spot. That's what I meant. <laughs> Damn, and we running out of time. I'm gonna be like, no, no. <laughs> at this point, we ain't in no yeah, rush. I will get there when I get there. Yeah. You, you get on battery too, still? Oh, okay. We ran out of battery. You got one. Okay. 
movie. I can do, you can do mixtape or album. Yeah, like, mixtape yeah. album. It could be a song. It could be a that, song, too. That describes the phase of your life you're in right now. I'll probably say... I say, can I look real quick? I'm gonna see yeah, real go quick. Ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Before I say it, nah, go ahead. Try to make sure you get it right. I don't. No, I don't want to. I gotta look at the song list first. Yep, still mad it. Ah, okay. Still mad it. Any particular reason why? My favorite song. I, I, I always say this is one mic. That was mm. one of the songs that resonated and touched me. Um, I felt like going through all the bullshit that I went through, um, and the tough times that I went through. Um, I wanted to give up on music and me saying like there's no reason for me to do it and yeah. then me realizing that remembering that like my first poem was from my aunt that passed away yeah. me confessing my love for her um, the moments that we shared that no one else can share and um, hoping somebody you know can understand you know what I mean and the, yeah. the way it touched people me sharing that um, so it one mic is literally the same thing. Like that's all I need, and it, it reminded me that's all I need. Like I'll go crazy if I, like sometimes I can't have conversations. Yeah. Like my situation with my father. Like I literally couldn't tell him half of the shit or that I'm pissed about. But I literally wrote a song because my friend told me write a letter and burn it, and I I literally just wrote it. I I, I had a cadence yeah, and yeah. I, I wrote it as a song. I wasn't even gonna put it out, and I put it on my last project, uh, Rain EP. And word for word, it's literally everything I, I wanted to say then. But it's, um, I, 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 I need that. And then ether in the beginning. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I'm still a nigga. I'm still, yeah. with, the, I'm still with the bullshit. Niggas want to be on bullshit. Yeah. But, um, you know, they deeper in the album, you know, that's at the end of the day, um, my art and my craft is, is my DNA and my core. Absolutely. So. How much? How much more time we got? We can, okay, cool. I got a couple more things. You know, just want to yeah. match with on your way. We, we can keep going. Yeah. Um, uh, so for for me, I, I I was trying to do a would you rather. That's like my thing now, right? Yeah. I want to make sure you get an either or. And I've been, I've been thinking about this one as we've been having conversation. Um, I'm gonna do this one. Would you rather have dinner with Jay Z, or would you rather um, let's just have breakfast with Pharrell? Woo. That's so hard. That's so hard. <laughs> that is so hard. You know why I feel like that's hard? I feel like Jay Z would give me some great game, and then I'd be like, "All right, I'm going to the world and fuck shit up." But I don't know. I feel like something in Pharrell. If I could, if I can have, if I can break bread with him, yeah. I. I can, we can make some music. I feel like I don't know how, but I'm like, yo, we can make a song out of this. Nah, word, word. Um, so I guess breakfast with Pharrell. Okay. I mean, I love. I never met Jay Z. I'm, I probably, I'm a rapper and all. Yeah. I'll probably be fucking. Uh, what's it? What's the term? Starstruck. Banger, yeah. yeah. I was starstruck when I saw like Alan Iverson. I grew up, and that nigga be everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nigga be at Dave and Buster's. I saw him. He was on same plane and shit. I'm like, that's crazy. But um, yeah, I, I go with Pharrell. I can sign on too. I met for I ran into Pharrell in California <laughs> too. Yeah, I walked past. We was talking about this the whole Cali thing. So like, yeah, I mean, he out there. You ran into him and he, did you say anything to him? Nah, I was. It, he was walking by. He looked like he wouldn't be bothered. Bother, yeah. yeah, he had one of those like fa- like phases. He was always white too. Mm. He was just like. I'm like you don't even look like him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm let you rock, bro. Let you rock. All right. <laughs> Crazy. All right, so um, we're disruptors in the culture in the podcast, right? And so we're we love to talk to people who we feel are you know forging their path, but disrupting the usual way is done, mm-hmm. right? Whether it's like through attention or however. Um, but how what how how do you define being a disruptor? Like what what's a disruptor to you, or what does it mean to be a disruptor? Should I say? I'm going against the norm, um, not doing what everybody else is doing to kind of breaking out. Um, kind of like with me and my music, I guess it's easy for me to drop a uh, freestyle, which I've been doing since middle school, talking about the fuck shit, talking about, you know what I mean? My niggas, how we grew up, the shit we got into, yeah. 
the niggas I know that get into all that, it's easy to talk about that shit because I, I, I hate to say it, but it's a part of our culture. It's in our DNA. It's, 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 it's easy for me. I've been rapping about that shit for years. But the shit that I'm, that I'm, I, I'm trying to, I feel like low-key want to put certain people in game. Like, I want to I help people. Yeah. Um, I want to touch people. Hopefully tell a story that resonates with you. Um, that's kind of, that's that's what I feel is a, is a disruptor. Like, there's no, like a like a Kendrick Lamar. Like, that, like, the stuff he talked about, like, no one was talking about what he was talking about at that at that time, um, and and actually, I don't know, like making a, a mark in the timeline um, versus just being a little homie that people figured up like like you like you're a real disruptor because you changed the game. Uh, but just stand right, absolutely. All right, so real quick, tell the people where they can find you, where they can do everything, right there in yeah. that camera. Okay. Yeah. So once again, my I go by the name of Be Easy. Um, AKA ZQ the Prophet, never did it for the profit. Um, you can find me on easy street.com, E A Z Y Y Y dash street.com. You can also find me at uh, easy, easy taught you on Instagram, Twitter, um, E A Z Y Y Y T A U G H T letter U. Um, I'm on all streaming platforms, be, e- be easy through wise. Um, Sage music out now, video coming soon. Peace, love, and light to anybody. That you know is tapped in. Um, I hope I can you know lift your frequency. Absolutely. And again, like to close out, like I, I told you that like I, we use this platform, you know, share with our friends as well. You know, to give them their flowers while they're doing it. Again, giving you your flowers. You know, we I I watch you from afar. You know, what I'm saying I interact when I when I get to you know I, I try to stay off the radar. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you got to come out and show you people love when you can when, while they're here. You know what I mean? So this is. I'm happy to have this opportunity to show you that, you know, let you know that people are watching you, people appreciate you from afar, even though they're not constantly in your face saying it. We want to see you do well. We want to see you be successful. And I can't thank you enough for, you know, coming on this platform and talking and sharing your story. No, I appreciate that, bro. And that's love. And you keep doing you. You stay on your grind. You stay making stuff happen. Um, And you're from where I'm from. So it means even more. Um, Because, you know, a lot of people that come from our area, you know, they, we, we try to uplift everybody that we can. Um, but, you know, I had, I had some people that were like my best friends that were like in different situations. Yeah. So it's, it's big to see you you doing your thing, you elevating, because um, you're making shit happen. So um, keep doing you. And you've always been giving people platforms. Um, even when you put me on one episode, like, <laughs> all heads. Man, I was like, I'm going to get you back to something. I told you, we're going to run it back, boy. We're going to run it back. I was in there with a be easy shirt. <laughs> On sneakers in. Hey, listen, man. But yeah, but you you keep doing you, man, and keep having a genuine spirit, a genuine heart. You too. Um, it's my first time meeting you, but I love your light. Thanks. Just keep being you and doing you. Appreciate it, man. So, you too, Drew. You. <laughs> <laughs> right, show everybody love. But again, man, I appreciate it. Um, like, follow, subscribe. Disruptors in the culture. I know we ran out of time, but thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, follow all of us, Disruptors ITC. You know where we can find Mr. Samir Smith. Myself, we are tagged in the comments. We're going to tag my man Be Easy as well. And uh, we will holler at y'all next episode. Peace.